The world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Don't think. Feel. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Welcome to another episode of Digital Communion. My name is Thomas Faustine Husking, and I'm joined as usual by my dear friend Nicholas Gregoriadis. No longer Nick Gabriel. Before we jump into the episode, can you talk about why the change? Yeah, but I can. Um, the further down the rabbit hole I go, the more I realize that language is an extremely powerful construct that alters our perceptions of reality and that words themselves uh, have incredible power and they can constrain and direct uh, energies and a human being is in some respects just a very complex collection of energies and vibrations and the name Gabriel, as I have subsequently found out, does not have the same meaning that it did before. To me, I have found out another definition of, or another meaning of that name, and um, it just doesn't gel with me anymore. So I um, had to ditch it. Come on, man, that's too intriguing. So what the hell did you find out about that name? I can't, I can't reveal that just yet. Wow. So, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. Okay. Um, that's interesting. So it used to mean one thing before, and you drew strength from it or inspiration or some sort of identity, and now it's gotten to the point where you feel like it is casting some sort of negative uh, light on you. Couldn't have said it better. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the birthday boy. Happy birthday to Thomas. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, if, if you look closely, you're probably listening, but for those that watch, look at this chin. I just turned 38, and I probably got like 38 more white hairs in my chin. I skipped <laughs> gray. News, bro. We don't need to look that closely. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to deal with in gray at all. I skip right to the white. So, yeah, if you're noticing that, my chin is white, son. I don't have any grays. Mine was always white, so I, I don't really have any empathy for you. But um, for what it's worth, you look very distinguished. The salt and pepper thing is, you, you, you've really grown into it. Thank you, man. It's, it's, uh, it's something that's only going to get, well, that will only progress. I'm not going to say better or worse. It will only progress. So each day I will have to you know, learn to live with that. My, my friend Lincoln told me the real bad part is when you start getting like white pubes. Apparently that is, that's when you start to lose hope for anything. So, you know, your manliness is all gone. Your youth, the bloom of your youth is past at that point, but you know, it's not, it's, we're not there yet. Not there yet, my man. Um, so uh, I think I'd like to ask you a question today. And that is, uh, you know, there's certain people who, like to ask the question, what would you tell the 18 year old Thomas? And I think I might have even asked that before on the show, but I'm going to change it slightly today. And I would say, oh, I'd like to ask, what is the biggest change in the way the 38 year old Thomas looks at the world compared to the 37 year old Thomas? Oh, wow. Just one year difference. Mm -hmm. Just one year. Wow. Okay. Hmm. That's a great question. Uh, for the most part, I am pretty intact in my thought processes and my what I think is important. However, I would say that last year I was still pretty hell bent on my own personal projects for me. And yesterday, my birthday started out, uh, it was great. I went out and surfed like I've done on my last like four birthdays. And it was just me and Gary the seal, I've, or Gary the sea lion. I've named him Gary. It's the same one. He's been there the whole time. This is my neighborhood sea lion. 
And then like a dozen dolphins were out there, wow. which was just usually it's like three or four. And, you know, you get to see some dolphins. Great. There was a, a many. There were many. I don't know if the grunions are running or the sardines are coming through or what. But mm -hmm. there were lots of dolphins. And it was just a really good environment to have a conversation with the I called it yesterday in my prayer, a panoply of gods. I was like, I don't care who's up there and listening or not. Um, I'm addressing this to you know, the context of the everything, the is. And I s just basically said, thanks for 37 full years of, you know, relatively healthy, um, extraordinary exploration. And it was very much a selfish pursuit for the most part. I feel like I'm a nice guy, but those 37 years were dedicated to Thomas. And... I asked for strength to be able to dedicate, you know, the next few, uh, to be fair, to be full, full disclosure, I only said I would be focusing on everybody else for the next five before I go back to like, hey, man, I want to learn how to do, <laughs> I want to do sculpture, I want to um, get very, very good at instruments again. Um, so for the next five years, I'm hoping to do this uh, business, which I will reveal eventually as we get closer to, to kicking it off. And it's all built around healing the world. You know, I alluded to it in my goals article. And it's the kind of thing where if I can pull it off, I could die pretty happy, you know, feeling that I actually made a, a positive contribution. So the biggest change from last year to this year would be that, yeah, I've completely shifted. This is the next big thing for me is going to be making this company the type of company that can help a billion people. And if I can pull that off, I mean, fuck, that's, I will have no problem handing over the reins to somebody else after five years so that I can go study sculpture in Paris or, you know, get my PADI certification and Bora Bora, whatever the fuck it is I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I've shifted from Thomas focus to an outward focus, and I hope I'm able to maintain that. And it may just utterly fail. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. I have a very strong feeling about this thing. It's something I can't let go in the same way that you've described going down this rabbit hole. I think about it when I wake up and I think about it when I go to sleep and I know that I can help heal the world. It's just a lot of pieces that have to, to come together in order to do that. I need to draw on all my network and all my strength and all the relationships I've ever cultivated in order to pull it off at the scale that I'm talking about. Well, blessings on your vision, my brother. Thank you very and, uh, much. I think that uh, it will my my role in helping you achieve this is helping you understand what the world really is. I can't wait for that. I mean, that's the this is obviously a continuation of where we where we left off in the last episode. But uh, since you will, that will be revealed in due time when you're ready to reveal it. Um, let's do the, the digital communion reversal. How, are, how is Nick Gregoriades, other than the name change, different from a year ago? Hmm. So, there's an expression, and that is that the wise man unlearns something every day. And I always thought that sounded cool. I always thought that sounded really, really cool. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't quite understand what it meant. I, I heard the, the content of the word, but I didn't understand the, the, of the words, but I didn't understand their meaning. And the Nick from a year ago was adding pieces of knowledge or pieces of or factoids, little factoids into a container filling them up as quickly as he could and the neck of today is ripping those pieces out as fast as he can um, and trying to look for it's, it's actually the most difficult part of what I'm doing right now with my life is sifting through things, sifting through information and figuring out 
what I can trust and what I what I can't trust. Uh, and it's been quite exciting and quite interesting. Uh, but to, to encapsulate and answer the question, uh, the Nick from today is far less certain of anything than the Nick from a year ago. Far less certain. In fact, there are no certainties in the world of the Nick of today. And do you feel like that's better or worse? Or are you putting those labels, would you, would you label it such? Let's go back to our episode 19, or maybe it was 18, about hope. That is still a little piece of software that's running in the background. And in, in computer science, you'd call it a subroutine. It's constantly running in the background. And that subroutine is still running there. It's, it's still saying, look, ultimately it's for the best that, that you are rebuilding, even though it's very difficult and confusing sometimes. Ultimately, you will have a better picture of the world and that will allow you to do what you need to do more effectively. So yeah, it's good, man. It's all good. Do you... Have you gotten any further in that quest to understand what you have come to understand via your dreams? And that's a good question. I wanted to speak to you about dreams. Um, I've been wanting to speak to you about it for a while because they do tie they tie into what what I'm experiencing a lot. Uh, uh, the dream world is something that. If, for example, us in our waking reality, when we wake from a dream, the waking reality is, uh, the dream reality is just this vague recollection. And I heard someone say that when you're in the dream world, the world of this reality, the awake reality is just a vague recollection. Um, and only those people who are fully aware are fully cognizant within each of those realities. Um, I was doing a technique a while back uh, that leads to increased lucidity during dreaming and it kind of started to scare me. Some strange things started to happen. Um, what are some of the things that's, that were terrifying? That's super intriguing to me because I've, I've you know, just sort of skirted around the edges of lucid dreaming and, and gone online and been like, oh, people do this, what they... You know, have the notepad next to them, and they hear the things that you can do, and you, you know, make sure you look at your hands and you spin around, and these are the things that you can allow you to get lucid. What was happening? Okay, I'm not going to go into the specifics of what was happening. The general thing that I started to realize is that it's a reality that is fraught with its own risks and dangers and obstacles and entities. And that unless you have the skills and abilities to deal with those, it's probably better not, it's better to not even try and navigate it. So for example, uh, if you don't know how to cross the street and you don't know how traffic lights work, it's probably not a good idea to walk around New York City. Do you get what I'm saying? And yeah, sure. if you don't speak a language or you don't know the customs uh, of a certain culture, it's probably, and that culture has got certain hostile elements to it, it's probably not a good idea to just to immerse yourself in that culture without uh, certain, certain training and certain knowledge. Um, and I interacted with several beings uh, that definitely didn't have my best interests at heart. Um, and yeah, there was some pretty, pretty intense stuff going on and I decided I don't really want to deal with it. I need to first figure out a little bit more about this wake or this, this third dimensional reality. Does that make sense? You're just trying to get some sleep, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> some Z's. I don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I read something I found funny the other day, which said like, when you were a kid, go to bed was a punishment, but now you're an adult, it's a reward. Yeah. And that yeah. really stuck with me. It is, dude. Yeah, I just need some fucking peace in my sleep, dude. I don't want to be dealing with aliens <laughs> and different dim interdimensional beings and fucking 
I just, yeah, I just don't need that right now. So if I'm interested in dealing with those guys because I feel like I've got the right stuff, uh, how do I, what do you recommend? Or for anyone else listening, like if, is there a definitive text? Is there a definitive website, blog, etc.? But I read, I read a couple of books in my 20s. I can't really remember the names, but there are, there are resources out there. I can't, I can't give the answer. I, I can't really answer your question because I'm not an authority. Um, like, I'm not an authority on that nature of existence or that, that plane of existence. So I would just say that anyone interested in, in uh, experimenting with that, um, just, just prepare yourself, like, just, just look into it first. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can't give any specific texts because I can't remember them. This was a long time ago that I was doing uh, astral projection and things like that. Um, yeah, does that make sense? So there's something to it, though. It's definitely, it's, Dude, you can get there. Yeah, you can get there. And I mean, this there's two different things. Lucid dreaming and, and astral projection are two different things. And I've done them both several times. Um, astral projection is is as real as it gets dude it's as real as this it, it's wow. real dude. yeah it's real and it, it can be very very scary um, and right now I just I want to figure out a little I know it's very they're, they're very interlinked and they, you can't really extricate the one from the other but I want to figure out a little bit more about this one <laughs> the three-dimensional existence before I go uh, diving into that one Wow. Mm. Okay. What are your yeah. thoughts? Tell me, have you ever had any lucid dreams? What are your, what do you believe about that? So, uh, I've had five flying dreams and I knew I was flying and it was the most exhilarating thing in the world and waking up was just heartbreaking. And I would talk to other people and it turns out not everybody's had flying dreams, you know? Interesting. It's special. And there have been just a few times where I'm like, oh, I'm dreaming now and I'm making things happen. And I did it without any study and it was just very organic and natural. Now that I'm trying to do it or focused on it, I think it's like the most difficult thing in the world. Like I'll have just this incredibly bizarre dream and I'd be like, why couldn't I look at my hands? Why couldn't I do a spin in a circle the way that I've read you're supposed to do? You don't and need I, to do any of that. You don't, you don't need, need to, to do that shit. No, it, it, like here's the the thing that worked for me in the end. Um, <laughs> all you need to do to become awake in that plane of existence is to become awake in this plane of existence. And the way you do that <laughs> is by constantly, constantly asking the question. The second you wake up in the morning, every time you walk through a door when you pick up your toothbrush to brush your teeth, when you're lying in the ocean on your surfboard, always ask the question. And as you ask it, pay very close attention to your environment. Ask the question, is this real or am I dreaming? And there will come a point where you will ask that question and the answer will be, I'm dreaming. Wow. So how much? How many times do I have to ask the question? You got to do this for a while. You got to keep doing this almost constantly, and it's a it's an exercise in presence because you can only ask that question when you're present. You can't ask it when you're thinking about something else. It doesn't work. You can't stop and say, "Is this real?" and look around and take in the environment and like get in touch with your senses and what's going on. You can't do that if you're thinking about what you're going to make for dinner. They just don't work together. So you keep doing that for a while and in, I don't know, it might take a couple of weeks, it might take a month, but sooner or later, the answer to the question will be, I am dreaming. That sounds like a lot of work. I was hoping you were just going to say I could eat a piece of pepperoni pizza right before I go to sleep. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I do, I, do have a pull, I do have a pull that I could sell you. That'll do it just as quick. Now we're talking. That's the American way, buddy. I want it like yesterday. Um, that's great. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, you know what? I just think that's a great exercise in general. And I'm going to start practicing that uh, tomorrow as soon as I wake you up. You can do it now. You can do it now. Right. Okay, hold on.
Now this is real. <laughs> um, that is a uh, wow. Okay, well, this is probably where we should wrap it up. But uh, again, stretching my mind, man, and giving people some hot tips on how to do some shit that maybe they didn't know about. Take it from the guy that has done multiple astral projections and lucid dreams. That is a great question to ask, and I'm going Just to start. Let the, let the record state that um, I do not consider myself an authority or an expert in astral, dream, astral projection or lucid dreaming. It's happened to me a few times, mostly by accident. And I did back up, back away from it because uh, I think that it is not as straightforward as it may seem. I would highly recommend you research and read and meditate on it before you decide to do it. Let the record state that I've issued that warning. Awesome. The record, let the record show. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Please leave us a review on iTunes. Um, please check out the webpage the Instagram, the Facebook, um, what am I missing? Oh, the YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can see uh, the first and second most handsome <laughs> men on the West Coast or whatever the new metric is. West of the Mississippi, I don't know. In Arizona, in, in my Fantastic. backyard. Um, thank you guys for listening and uh, we'll see you next time. Blessings. <laughs>